Hello, and welcome to the Smart Injury Doctors Podcast, the injury market's top program for doctors, lawyers, and insurers who want to gain greater insight on how to improve patient recovery results and deliver better services in the U.S. injury market. Please welcome your host, Dr. Jeffrey Allen Kronk. Hello, doctors, and welcome. Today on the program, what I want to talk about is explaining CRMA results to your patient. CRMA is computerized radiographic mensuration analysis. It's a spinal ligament injury test. It's a test that picks up the imaging biomarker of a ligament injury. So an imaging biomarker is that thing that's detectable in an image that leads to a definitive diagnosis. If we have a ligament, remember there's 220 specialized ligaments in the human spine, 23 of those are discs. If we have a disc derangement or disc herniation, that's an imaging biomarker picked up on MRI. We can also have excessive motion, which is the most problematic ligament injury there is, and that imaging biomarker is picked up on standard stress radiology. And we know there's norms for the movement of an intervertebral body. We know that there's abnormal movement and we know there's seriously abnormal movement. And we know that these are consistent with what are left behind with a ligament injury. So when we're explaining, first of all, we've properly explained to the patient that we're doing this testing procedure and we've, we've positioned ourselves as experts in this area by saying, Look, you know, this testing is what we do in order to determine the severity and location of a ligament injury. This is the most significant injury that the spine can undergo. So we only use uh, the highest level of professional radiologists that we can find and competent radiologists that we can find to perform this service so that you're elevating yourself, you're elevating your status. You've already done this with the patient. You've already explained why you're sending out for this procedure. You've already explained to the patient that this is unique. I've also educated our doctors to explain, look, the majority of people out there that have chronic pain today have the condition that this test picks up. They've just never had it diagnosed. And so it goes undiagnosed. So they're walking around in chronic pain when they could actually be getting help. Now, doctors, that's in a consult. That's language that I teach doctors to use in the consult that assists you with getting more referrals. It assists you with getting more non-injury referrals because remember the thing that causes chronic pain causes, or the thing that causes acute pain in an injury state is the same thing that causes chronic pain, the same condition. So you've already explained this, but now we're at the visit where you're actually explaining the results of the test. Let's say the test came back and you have a uh, C4 on C5 uh, nerve problem, or you have C4 on C5, uh, let's you have alteration of motion segment integrity at that state for translation findings. Okay, now you're explaining, I'm just going to use the patient's name as Mark. You're explaining, Mark, your, your test results came back. I've got them. It shows that you have severe ligament damage in the middle part of your neck. I would touch the patient. I would point to it. You don't have to give them the report. Uh, that's, you know, that's not important. That's, those are not the important things. Mark, here's what is important. It came back, there was significant ligament damage. Now, what that does is it doesn't change our treatment uh, goals. The treatment goals that I said to you in the report of findings are still the treatment goals today. Those goals are to have you pain-free at the end of our care, and you have you have no chronic pain, no chronic situation at, at all with this condition, to have you, it, interf it not interfering with any activity of your daily living, and to not have it interfere with your ability to earn a living at all. So where you you feel like you're never had the injury in the first place. That's the goal. Now, what this test tells me though is that you're at much higher risk for a thing called long-term residual complaints. Those are conditions that never fully go away. That's a chronic condition. You're at high risk for that. Now, here's the thing that I need to tell you. You are the patient that cannot miss care. You can't miss visits. You can't miss anything that we're telling you to do in treatment. You have to be a stellar patient because I'm not just working on your spine to reduce down your acute pain in the situation. Today, as a provider, I'm looking at your spine and your spinal health and your health 30, 40 years from now, 10, 20, 30, 40 years from now. Seriously. 
I'm looking at your future when we are doing this treatment program now. Now, you may not. It's my job as your guide to get you through treatment to actually understand this, and you'll understand it as we go. So here's what I'm telling you. As a result of this condition, you got to be really good with treatment. You also have to be really good with communicating to me. If I do have you do an in-office rehab procedure, I have you do an at-home uh, exercise program, and any of this seems to bother you at all, I need you to tell me right away. Tell me right away. Okay, this is information that I need to know. Now, I gave you injury recommendations about water, about sleep, about anti-inflammatory diet. Doctors, if you have, we have a thing called smart injury recommendations that are just basic fundamentals that you're going to give the patient to get healthier in the first place and to reduce down their own inflammation in the first place. I've given you those things. Those are good things to do, right? Now, here's what I need you to know, though. What I need you to know is that with this level of ligament damage, it causes an instability in the spine. Anything that's unstable is prone to erratic or unpredictable behavior. And what I mean by that, if your neighbor's unstable, they're unpredictable. They're prone to erratic behavior. It just They can go good, good, good. They're good for months and months, and all of a sudden, they have a flare-up. Same with this condition. Now, that's going to be important for you to know because... We're going to be talking with you about supportive care toward the end of your care. Doctors, I am initiating this in week one, supportive care conversations in week one, because it's the truth. What that means is that I'm going to be recommending probably, no matter how well you do in care, that we do two to four visits a year for the next two years after you're done with care, just to support the care that we did. And then I'll want you to take a look at doing my patients that see me twice a year or four times a year and they do it for 30 years are going to be much healthier than my patients that wait 10 years, don't see me, and now they come in with some sort of situation and now they want me to fix it. So it's much easier to take care of a spine a little bit over time than it is to take care of a spine that has been badly neglected for years or decades. But this is talk we're going to have toward the end of care. I just want you to know that I'm going to have that conversation. Doctors, you're, you're starting to talk about this now in you, just by in your report, in your report to the patient, and you're allowing the patient to ask you now any questions that you want to ask them. You're telling that patient, look, this is the other thing with, with this condition is in treatment, a lot of times, everything's going to go really well. So you'll spend a month or two, and all of a sudden you, you realize, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm, I'm like 100% better, and I, 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 I should be done with treatment. And then all of a sudden, you watch a football game on a Monday night, you sleep wrong, wrong on your neck, and it feels like when you wake up, you're right back at day one. You are not back at day one. Now, doctors, if you don't tell them that they can hit this, here's what's going to happen. They're going to think that your care is not working. So if you tell them it, it could happen and it happens, your status goes up. So now you're basically the patient, you're telling the patient, if that happens, you just come in for a visit or two and I'll have you right back to where you were. That's the nature of this condition. Now, if you tell them that and they hit it, they'll be back in your office. If you don't tell them that, they're going to be in their office with a coworker that says, hey, oh my God, my neck's killing me. They're telling their coworker their neck's killing them. Their coworker says, yeah, chiropractic care didn't work for me or your care didn't work for me. Uh, I went to a physical therapist or I went to some other doctor. And the next thing you know, that patient's now in that other doctor or that physical therapist's office because you didn't tell them you could hit it. Now, at the end of care, when you're talking to them about supportive care, you're going to be talking to them about the fact that hey, I want you to see me twice a year, four times a year. I routinely would have patients see me either twice or four times a year for, for the next two years after an injury, just for some routine supportive care to support the care. Remember, you're releasing a patient who's on consistent care with you. You don't know how it's going to be when they're not with consistent care. So if they opted not to take up that recommendation, then I just reminded them, okay, look, here's what I need you to know. This thing causes an instability. So if two months, three months, six months, a year, two years from now, the chronic situation, the pain that you feel now starts to come back. Maybe it's not as bad, but it starts to come back. I don't for a minute want you to think our care didn't work. It worked perfectly. And doctors, if you don't tell patients this and the, and the pain does come back two, four, five, six months later, they think your care didn't work. 
You tell them, no, it's not because the care didn't work. It's because it needs some supportive care. Come right in right away. Do an adjustment or two and let me get you right back to where you were. Doctors, that's what you want to talk about. Now, the other thing that you want to talk about at that point is the fact that they have a, they have injury analysis always. This is, this is obviously, this is more not when you're talking to the patient about their report. This is more into when you're talking to the patient at the end of care that you always have a baseline of their injuries and that baseline can always be retested. And that's the beauty of a CRMA test. But doctors, what you want to do in that report is you want to explain the fact you want to increase their compliance and you also want to explain, look, this is the number one situation that most people don't have diagnosed. And when they get injured, they need to have this diagnosed. So you want to position yourself as that doctor for their friends, their family, their coworkers, the people that they know that have chronic pain, that, ha- that are in injuries, that are getting bad care because they're working with doctors that don't even know how to determine the severity and location of the injuries that they have. This is what makes smart injury doctors smart. This is what makes smart injury doctors competent. So it's important to go over those things when you're going over that CRMA report. Doctors, Like all of these programs, short, sweet, to the point. I hope you got something from this. Do give me some comments down below. Tell me what you struggle with. I appreciate the comments. And doctors, thank you very much for your attention. I look forward to seeing you on the next program. You've been listening to the Smart Injury Doctors Podcast, the number one audio production show for professionals in the U.S. injury market that want to deliver better injury services to the patients, clients, or insureds they serve. If you like what you heard today, please leave us a review and don't forget to join us on our next program.